what is going on traders welcome back to another video i hope you guys are having an amazing weekend today we're going to be talking about palantir technologies i have a couple of updates for you and of course on top of that we're going to do a very quick technical analysis i hope you guys are going to enjoy this video with that let's get started <music> Thank you everyone for taking time and being here. If you are here for the first time, please do not forget to smash that like button and subscribe to this channel. I highly appreciate it. So today we are talking about Palantir Technologies. I can see Palantir getting more and more attraction and the community is growing. For those of you who have been holding Palantir for the past five, six months, eventually we're going to get rewarded accordingly. I get a lot of messages from investors suggesting they exited Palantir around $24, $25. They're asking me if this is a good entry point or if Palantir is going to keep dropping to $10, $12. To be honest with you, I have no answer for that. Looking at the chart at any given day, this can drop to $15, $14. I don't even want to say that. Even it can drop to $10, $11. It can even shoot up to $25, $24. See, there are a lot of possibilities. Always trying to find the bottom. That could work if you're really good at it. It has never worked for me. Since it was trading around $24, $25, I keep averaging down. But when I average down, I always choose some support and resistance areas. For example, when Palantir dropped from $35, $36, I just didn't buy shares around $30. I waited. You know, actually, I got good entry points around $24, $25. That was the first entry point that I had. So my other entry point was around $21, $22. And last but not the least, I purchased 200 shares around $17, if I'm not mistaken. I think we can quickly check it. I purchased 200 shares at $16.79. So why am I talking about these things? You see, every time when I make a video or do a technical analysis, I always talk about key entry points, exit points. And if you have $300, that is the example that I usually give. Where I put my first $100, the second $100, I always put the remaining $100 on the side in case if I get good deals. That's why I keep talking about this good entry points. But anyways, let's look at the chart and see what is happening with Palantir. So right now it is trading at $20.08. That is pretty good. Check out the 30 minutes chart. It was consistently creating higher highs and higher lows. So the first thing I am expecting on Monday if Palantir breaks above this resistance area around $20. Because if you see in the past, Palantir struggled a lot actually to broke below this resistance area and now it did broke for a very short period of time those of you got an opportunity to collect some shares at that price congratulations that was a very good entry point now it is actually struggling to get back once it did that then we can see if it continues to create higher highs and higher lows and eventually start to trade above this downtrending channel see some of the price areas that i am looking for is around 21 22 dollars that would be my first confirmation but so far i can say that i haven't got a clear confirmation this can eventually go to 25 26 dollars but recently palantir has been consolidating above 17 dollars one thing that i don't like about consolidating in that area you see when palantir at first was consolidating around 24 25 dollars and slowly dropped and formed another support area around 23 22 dollars then everybody was relaxing they kind of got used to what Palantir is doing, then eventually actually dropped even farther and start to consolidate around $20, $21. It is actually making it a norm to drop a little bit, stay there for a little while, and continue to drop some. That pattern, I don't like it so far, but this Friday showing us a sign, it could potentially get out of that downtrending pattern, and we might see Palantir securing its previous support area above $20. And now we can quickly check the position cost distribution. The reason I want to talk about this thing is because if you remember in the past, I talked about human psychology and we say that most Palantir investors, the average price is around $24. If you guys remember, you guys can go back and check it at $24. And we discussed that less than 1% of Palantir's investors are profitable right now. Most of these investors will get an opportunity to average down. That's why we talked about Palantir might not be staying around $17, $18 for quite a long time unless everybody's turning bearish on it and the Nasdaq keeps pulling back, of course. That is what exactly happened. And instead of seeing a massive continuous sell-off, people averaging down. That's why the average price right now actually dropped to $22.25. So keep it on your watch list and see what could happen in the upcoming weeks. 
any positive news, look at it on Friday. This stock has grown by 9.3%, guys. 9.3%. If you see NASDAQ, for example, it only recovered 2.3%, which means Palantir actually recovered three times faster than NASDAQ this time. That is a very good sign because in the past, I have seen when NASDAQ recovers, actually Palantir stays the same or keeps dropping down. But this time, not only it is recovering, it is actually recovering faster. Very good indication for growth stocks. You see, last few weeks, most of the time when NASDAQ recovers and instead of growth stocks recovering, they actually drop down and some high mega cap value stocks, they actually grow in price. They recover with NASDAQ. But this time, mega cap companies stay the same in most momentum stocks and growth stocks recovered faster than NASDAQ. A very good sign. But I hope this continues in the upcoming weeks. Then we can say this could be a potential bottom. I'm not going to name a bottom and say, oh, this is a very good opportunity. Put all your money. That would be so stupid of me if I say that. But in the meantime, Palantir keeps getting more media coverage. This article was talking about Palantir Technologies downgraded by Zach's investment research. I mean, this could be a bad thing, but personally, I don't really care. Wolf Research reduced their price target on Palantir Technologies from $23 to $20. And on top of that, Goldman Sachs Group raised Palantir Technologies from neutral to a buy rating. They raised their price target from $13 to $34. This actually happened a long time ago on February 17th. I don't know why they're talking about it now. This is May 14th. But anyways, let's keep reading this. And last but not the least, City grouped up their price target on Palantir Technologies from $15 to $170. This also happened on Wednesday. Insane, from $15 to $170. And finally, Morgan Stanley upped their price target on Palantir Technologies from $17 to $19, underweight rating in a research note on Wednesday. Five equity research analysts have rated the stock with a sell rating. Three have issued a hold rating and two have issued a buy rating to the stock. This is very interesting, guys. I don't know how analysts think sometimes because I am an analyst too. I've been working as an analyst for quite some time now. But why would you advise people to sell Palantir when it is nearing its bottom? Why didn't they release this article when it was trading at $45 or $35? But uh, anyways, <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm just curious. It is very funny. Just think about what is the worst thing that could potentially happen with the stock. Dropping to $8, $10, $14. What is the worst that could happen? Of course, if you buy it at $45, the worst that could happen is dropping to where it is right now or lower than that. That would be scary. But now we're already in the mud. When the storm is about to pass, how can you let go of something that you've been holding for the past four or five months? Very interesting. I'm not trying to give you financial advice, but sometimes it just surprised me to see these things. On the contrary, Cellularity looks to advance cellular therapies with Palantir. The reason I'm mentioning that is on the previous article, there was not a defined presentation about this one. They even released a video. This is a short video, about seven minutes. If you're really invested in Palantir, I highly recommend for you to go ahead and watch this video because you have to understand what this company do so you can be able to understand the reach and diversification that Palantir can potentially have. They have grown tremendously on their government contracts, but their commercial side still needs work that could potentially reflect on the upcoming quarter. And of course, moving forward, being able to develop an app so they could have a B2C platform. That will be a game changer for Palantir, guys. Just imagine how many people can be benefited from a company that integrate data with artificial intelligence. I can now wait to see that in real life. In the other article about Palantir's Soros bought up stocks linked to Bill Hong's Archegos implosion. So this could have been a blow up for Palantir. Some people can see it as a good thing. Some people see it as a bad thing. The biggest exit in the quarter was Palantir's technology. Soros sold 18.5 million shares valued about $435 million. The firm originally revealed it owned a stake in the controversial data mining company controlled by Peter Thalhe in November, rapidly issued a statement saying the original investment was made in 2012 and it regretted the decision. 
it looks like they sold it at $23 average price because if you divide $435 million by 18.5 million, you roughly get about 23.5 per share. Maybe this could be their biggest regret, but I personally believe their biggest regret is not here yet. When I say this, this is not pity. I'm just being honest with you. I can only imagine when Palantir reaches $50, $100 in the next few years, then I want to see their reaction. Time will tell. And last but not the least, Biden signs executive order aimed at shoring up U.S. cybersecurity. One of the companies that can potentially be involved in this project will be Palantir Technologies. They've been working with the Department of Defense for a very long time now. They've been getting a lot of projects, not only from U.S., but other countries as well. So before ramping it up, I just want to show you the options chain. Very important. This is where you know most of the investors and Palantir are bullish versus bearish. Every time when I see Palantir now, the call volume is increasing massively, especially in the last few weeks. It has been insane. I want to show you, for example, the one that is expiring on January 2022. Check out the open interest for $30 strike price. It is 63361 with 65 implied volatility. That is pretty interesting. And the volume is 1645 And the other one is the $25 score. Open interest, 46238 Volume again, 1662 Implied volatility is at 64 Put versus call volume ratio 0 0.16. Crazy. It has a lot of call volume. Put versus call open interest ratio 0 0.45 which means the call is actually more than double the put open interest ratio. Very interesting. Now let's quickly go ahead and check the $30 strike price open interest have. Put the number right here, 63,361. The maximum cost will be $11 million. Wow, that is crazy. And I want to check the $25 as well. It has 46,238 open interest. The maximum cost is above $12 million. So when you combine those two, only two strike prices expiring few months down the road, that is more than $20 million in open interest. Very interesting. I'm not giving you an advice to go ahead and buy it, but I was just curious to find out what other investors are doing. Please let me know what you think about this video in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. I will be seeing you on my next video. Thank you.